Okay, so we already did the transfer for the hemiplegic patient down to the mat um, table. It could be on the mat table or um, on the mat on the floor. Um, and we're going to do some mat exercises. So this is preambulation exercises on the mat. And this is for the hemiplegic patient. We're going to say she has right side involvement. Okay, again, just to make it consistent so that when you're thinking back later, you'll um, know which way it was. So uh, what's the first position? Supine. So okay, so go ahead and lie on your back. Hi, patient. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. My name is BJ Simmons, and I'm going to be working with you on the mat. Um, we're going to be doing some exercises to get you nice and strong so we can get you up in the parallel bars, do some walking, um, and get you ready to go home. Okay. okay. Um, I understand that you had a stroke and that you have weakness on your right side. Okay. We're not going to do a lot with the right side right now. Eventually, we'll add more in with the right side. We will be using your leg more than your arm. Okay. So. Um, let's start off with some exercises here. So I'm going to have you guys come up with a lot of them. What type of things can we do to strengthen for preambulation in this position? Bridge. Reaching. Reaching? That's what you said? Bridge. Okay. Oh, bridge. Sorry. <laughs> bridge. Okay. Um, let's start off with a bridge then. If we wanted to do a bridge with bilateral legs, we can do that. Let me see, that's your involved side. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you take this leg, put it underneath your knee, Okay. And you can actually use this leg to bend that other knee up. So if she couldn't lift that knee up or initiate the movement with the knee, she could start it with that foot, and then she can finish it by bending her foot over like that to bring it up. Okay, So that kind of helps to, to bring that leg up if you need the extra help. Some patients will be able to pull that leg up okay. Again, they're not usually totally paralyzed in the involved leg. The leg is usually stronger than the arm. Okay, So we have her in this position. Um, and I'm going to go over to this side. Okay, patient, um, what I'm going to have you do is something called a bridge. And this is a really important one for you to practice on your own, too. Um, and all I'm going to have you do right now is just lift up your hips. So go ahead and lift those hips right up off the ground. Good. And go back down. Now, with a person with hemiplegia, what you're going to tend to see is this side will come up nice and strong. The other side might kind of lag behind a little bit. Okay, so go ahead and do that. For just a second. So if I see something like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her some input on her involved side. Go ahead and go back down. Okay, I'm going to put your hands up here a little bit higher. Okay. This time when you come up, I want you to push against my hand right here. Okay. okay. So I'm just kind of on the ASIS type area. Okay, go ahead and push up. Push, push, push. And I'm just going to do that on her involved side. That gives her some input to push a little harder on that side. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, if you guys can't see back here, feel free to move around. Okay. All right, um, so that would be the bridge. Okay, um, to progress from that, we're going to do lifting one leg out um, after she gets up into the bridge position. Um, it's going to be easiest to lift her weak leg first so that she's actually putting all the weight on her strong leg. So go ahead and come up into the bridge position. Okay, and then just try to lift this foot up slightly and then put it back down. Good. Okay, and then the hips go down after that. So bridge up. Good, make sure she gets a nice straight bridge, lift the foot up put the foot back down, and then lower the bridge, okay? To make it harder than that, switch feet. It's going to be harder for her to maintain her, her weight in her upright hips on that weak leg, okay? So lift up again. This time try to lift that leg. I might need to help stabilize here a little bit. I don't do it unless she needs it, but if she does need it, I'll be there to help, okay? Back down. Okay, um, you can also do some, you know, crossing over where she uh, it, it might be hard for her to get in this position, but doing like this and lifting up. Okay, go ahead and lift the hips up. Okay, so you might have to help get her into that position. Okay, and go ahead and cross that leg over. Good. Like and lifting my down. hips too? I, I would actually cross first and then lift the hips okay. up. Okay, so go ahead and cross your leg first and then lift the hips up. Okay, and again, if she needed some input on this side, I'd give her input. Okay, and then we'll just talk about weakness on that side. So she can use that leg. She can use that leg. That last one is probably going to be really hard. Again, we're talking about as the patient progresses, we can challenge her with more things. That one's going to be really hard for that patient, so she probably won't be able to do that on the first day. Okay? But I'm, I want to show you as many progressions as possible because you're going to have some patients who, you know, do really well after a stroke. Did anybody see American Idol last night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brett Michaels on there. 
guy's on everything these days. <laughs> but he was playing his guitar and everything. He was doing really well. So can you resist their foot while they're bringing it up? Would that be yep. another? Fear? Yep. You could do that too. So any, you know, adding in any resistance along the way would be really good. Okay. Okay. So that's the bridge. We could also do some things. We talked the other day about AD doctors, <coughs> tricep. Well, I'll be on the one side. AD doctors, triceps for traditional approach. We're only going to worry about that left arm. Okay. We're not going to do a lot of exercises with the right arm. Okay, so that gives you some things to work on in the uh, supine position. Okay, after that, she's going to roll over into the prone position. Okay, remember we could do the, the elephant roll. Oops, sorry. The elephant roll. Remember with the hemiplegic patient, they're going to be holding on proximal to the wrist rather than interlacing the fingers. Okay, um, so which, which direction do you feel like you want to turn? That direction? Okay. My knees are squeaky. Okay. All right, so um, I would have you go ahead and put your legs down. Which leg needs to be on top? The weak leg needs to be on top, or in this case, the leg that's on the roll from side needs to be on top. Okay. All right, and then go ahead and grab your uh, weak arm. And on three, you're gonna one, two, and then three, you're gonna roll toward me. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to put my counting in when you might have been on two or three already. So, all right, is that uncomfortable under you? Let me. No. That. Be careful of the buckle because that can get uncomfortable for the patient. Okay, so this is your weak side. All right, patient, uh, how are you doing so far? Good. Good. We're going to do some exercises in this position, and it's probably going to be most comfortable if I get you up onto your elbows. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to help with this side. Okay. And you go ahead and get up onto your elbow on the other side. Okay. There you go. You want the elbow directly underneath the shoulder. You don't want it to be you know, down like this. It should be a nice kind of a 90 degree angle there. Um, if I need to support her in that position, I can either put my hand just on her shoulder. I can put my leg right next to hers if I need two hands. So I can put my leg next to her shoulder. Lots of ways to do it. Okay, if we were doing shift and lift, okay, um, it's going to be easiest for her to shift onto her strong side. Let me explain why we want to do both directions for this. If she um, is shifting over to that side and I'm going to help her lift this arm, that means she's getting weight bearing through that arm, which she's going to need to use the cane or crutch or whatever. Then we're going to shift over to this side. She's going to need to use that hand to open doors and do things like that. So she's going to need to lift this hand. So both times we're working on the, on the strong hand. Okay. Alrighty. So our goal, our rationalization, is that we're working on the strong hand. Okay. So um, I'm going to have you shift away from me a little bit. And I'm going to help you lift this arm right up. Good. All right, good. And back down. Okay. Now shift to this side. Lift this hand up. Touch my hand. Touch my hand. Touch my hand. Good job. Okay. With this hand again, reach way out here. Good. The same hand, your left hand, way over here, making her cross the midline a little. Okay. But I'm on this side to help kind of support that shoulder if she needs it. Okay. Um, she could do some happy puppy. Not gonna, excuse me, you're not going to do jackknife with this patient. She's not going to be able to push with that other arm. Okay, so this is not a jackknife patient. Okay, what's the next position? Long sit. Long sit. So she's going to get back up onto her, um, onto her bottom. To do that, she's going to get onto her strong side and then push up with her extensors of her elbow. Okay? Well, first you're going to go ahead and roll onto your strong side. Okay? And then what you're going to do is going to come up onto your elbow there. Okay, and then just kind of walk your way up. Good. Okay, and then I'm going to switch. The right, because we're doing traditional approach, so we're just going to work the, the strong side. We're going to kind of ignore that weak side doing the traditional approach. Um, again, in the fall, you're going to be doing more with MBT, where you'll be using the weaker side. Okay, I moved over to this side because this is the side she's going to tend to fall toward. Okay, can we see okay on that? Um, I'm going to put my leg kind of up behind her like this. If she starts to fall, I can catch her fairly early. It won't take a lot of hard work on my part to, to push her back up. Okay. So if I need both of my hands, I can do it that way. If I don't, I can just kind of be over like this. If I'm in half kneeling position, I'm going to be a lot more stable to work with the patient. Okay, what are some things we can do in this position? Fanny walks. Fanny walks. Okay. Okay. Um, once we get you up in the parallel bars, 
Once we get you in the parallel bars, we're going to be doing a gait pattern called the, anybody remember? For this patient, hemiplegic? Modified point gait, okay? Um, so with the modified point gait, what that means is you're going to move the crutch forward and then your, your weaker side and then the stronger side. Um, right now we're going to practice that pattern. We're going to go backward first because it's easier to pull your legs than it is to push them. Okay, but we'll go backward and then we'll go forward. Okay, but we're going to use that same pattern. Okay, so there's a handle for you there. We're going to pretend that's your cane. Okay. okay, so you already brought that back. You're going to shift over onto that side. And then I might need the help with this leg here, okay? And then your left hip. Okay, don't move that too much further back. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then shift down to it. Just like that. And that leg. Okay, so we're doing the same pattern. Okay, that's going to help get the patient used to that pattern. Once we've gone back a ways, we can go forward. Okay, so this time bring the feet slightly forward or the push up bar. Okay, shift onto it, and then bring this foot forward, and then your strong leg. Okay, beautiful. Okay, nice job. So that's a good preambulation activity to do there. Remember, we also talked about you know you could do the slouching and sitting type of thing, like the cat and camel. Um, you could do some reaching things with this arm. Um, uh, you could do some hip hiking if she should need it. So it's just going to shift over and just kind of lift this hip up towards your shoulder. Okay. And then lean toward me. I'll help kind of support you here. And lift your other hip up. Okay. So you can strengthen some of the hip hikers as well. Okay. You could do some things with the legs. Maybe some strengthening of the quads. Or maybe some isometrics or something like that even. Okay. All right. Next position is quadruped, hands and knees, whichever you'd like to call it. Yeah, you can get it okay, um, I'm going to have you switch over to this side a little bit. Okay, um, what we're going to do is we're going to bend your knees so that your knees go that way and your feet come this way, kind of a side sitting position. Okay. <laughs> All right, and in just a minute, what's going to happen is you're going to kind of take this arm, you're going to swing it around. I'm going to be on that side when you do that. Okay. Um, and I'm going to help with this arm once you get in that position. You're going to end up on your hands and knees. Okay? Once you're on your hands and knees, we're going to do some shifting. You know, forward, backward, left and right. I'm going to have you arch your back up, let your back kind of sag down. Um, we'll do some things called happy puppy where you're kind of wagging your tail. Um, <clears throat> and then we may do some shift and lift where we're kind of shifting onto one arm, lifting the other arm. Okay? So let me get over to the other side first. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let me get this out of there first. Okay. So on three. One. Really get the momentum going though. Two. Three. There you go. Now I can support her shoulder. I don't know if you can see, but I've, I'm kind of supporting her shoulder with my hand right here until I get her all set up. Thank you. And if, um, I'm going to let go of you for just a second. If the patient is having a hard time and you see that elbow buckling, which you probably will with this type of patient, we're going to do that elbow block. If you can't see, go ahead and move around a little bit to kind of get a view of this. Okay. One thing I can do to lock her arm out is to externally rotate. That's going to make the elbow kind of get into a locked position. Then I'm going to put my thumb near her thumb and I'm going to come behind her elbow. I need to make sure I'm on the posterior part of it so that I can push her into a locked position. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back under your shoulder a little more. Externally rotate you. And I'm going to be right here. Okay. Now go ahead and try to bend your elbow. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Okay. <laughs> so she's got a really good lock. So now we could do some forward and backward. So I'm lean way back. Good. Shift over to your left and over to the right. And back to the left. Forward and backward. Okay, so I've got her in a really good locked elbow position there, okay? If for some reason I need my hands, another thing I can do, okay, if she can't take any weight on that shoulder at all, or that arm at all, I can kind of put my, my knee so it's right under kind of this part of her shoulder here. Okay, so now she's also stabilized. So if this arm can't take any weight, that's a way that you can free up your hands. So shift forward, backward, left, and right. Okay, now go ahead and arch your back down and up. 
way up, way up. Go ahead and look at your belly button while you do it. Okay, get the whole spine in there, okay? And then look up and let your back slouch down. Okay, so we can get some really good trunk strengthening in there as well. Okay, um, this particular person, she's not going to be able to push with her involved arm so much. So she, it, it's a little harder to get up into that kneeling position. Okay, um, what I want you to do is put as much weight on this shoulder where I have it as you can. Take your other hand, I'm going to move you a little bit here so you have room. Okay, and then put your other hand on my knee and push right up into the kneeling position. Good. And I'm going to have you put this hand on my shoulder. In front of you. Okay. If she can put her hand there, great. She may or may not be able to. Um, sometimes you can just kind of balance it there, um, you know, depending on the patient. Okay, and then we do kind of the same type of things we did the other day. Some shifting. Okay, forward toward me. And back. Forward. Okay, left, right, all that. Um, I want you to shift some weight really strong onto this arm. Okay, so really hold it like you're going to hold a crutch type of thing. And then I'll help you kind of move this arm around a little bit. Okay, relax your arm. What I'm, what I'm trying to do... You can hold it here. Okay, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get her used to having the center of gravity moving around and using that arm to stabilize. Okay, good. Can you shift over? Can you lift that hip up like you did before? Good. Okay, shift down to this side. Beautiful. Okay, so again, some shift and lift. I could have her try to balance momentarily, put her hand on my head and back down gently. Go ahead. Okay, that one. Now try this one. Good. Okay, so she can do some activities like that as well. Okay. covered all the positions. Okay, well, the parallel bar is a different activity. So um, coming back down, I'll let this one go down for a second. Go ahead and put your arm on my arm, or on my leg. Okay, I'm going to help support here. And go ahead and put your other arm down there. And then we would get her down into prone or supine or whatever position we need. Okay? Get the idea? What was the transition from her <coughs> Just, oh, I just kind of helped support this one. And it, it's going to be really hard for this patient, but I could like rest her elbow or shoulder on my leg first okay. and then let her reach up with her strong arm. Okay? All right. Thank you, patient. Yeah.